we'll start just cross leg seat, really simple. Eyes can be open or closed. Take a full inhalation and a steady, slow through the nose exhalation. And if your eyes are closed, your gaze is upward as if you're looking into the back of your forehead like a blank screen. And perhaps where you're seated, there's light entering and there's a little flicker behind the eyelids. Often when we've had our eyes open and then we close them, we have still these flickers of light and memory of what was just seen or last taken in. Take another deep breath in, hold it at the top, relax your shoulders and steady exhale through the nose. We'll bring our hands to greet at our heart center and setting an intention today of fluid movement that will welcome this watery quality behind me, near you, also within you and around you. Uh, the ocean, the rivers, the waterways, they connect us no matter where we are on this planet. Perhaps setting a dedication or a commitment to someone or something in your life that keeps you motivated to keep going, keep moving, keep breathing. Bow your head to your hands, your mind to your body. Take another full breath in and emptying out. As you release your hands back into your lap, as you blink the eyes steadily to open, bring the fingertips down by your sides. Reach your left or right arm, sorry, up to the sky. Lean into your left hand. Just take a nice wide side stretch open. And then inhale back through center. Exhale to the other side. And up and open, inhale. Reaching over, exhale. And there's no wrong way to move here. We're simply expressing those ribs more open. And through today's practice, an awareness and connection to our hips and shoulders, but generally for today will be the connective tissue between the two, so our side body, really tapping into the left and right, the front and back. We'll work into some back bends, some side bends, and just an overall stretch for the mid-lower back. Two more here. As you come back to her, switch the cross of your legs, taking a simple twist, left hand to right knee, right hand around behind you. Sit tall on the inhalation, and as you exhale, rotating, looking back over your shoulder. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, tall. Exhale, rotate. Come back around through center. Right hand to left knee, sit tall. And twist. Sit tall. And twist. Full breath. Rotate. And back around to center. Catch the knees again with the hands. We'll keep the same cross leg. We're gonna front to back with a little bit of bistrika breathing. So if we think about our inhale forward, you can be in through the nose, out through the nose, and then in, out. We'll do about 40 or so. So close your eyes and just let your middle body pull front to back. And sometimes I like to think as if someone had their ribs on my hands, they're pulling back and then 
pushing forward. Inhale forward, exhale back. Now this can be a really invigorating, enlivening breath, but you may find it getting a little bit unsettling. You can always pause whenever you need to. It's almost like a train going down the tracks, the sound of your breath. Equal in, equal out. Five more. Then sit tall, eyes closed. Take a deep breath in. A sighing breath. Again, inhale. Exhale. With eyes closed, just notice any energy shift. You might feel the vibration change in your inner core, your shoulders, your mid back. As you blink the eyes to open, we'll take the feet around in front or to the side and come onto your feet into a standing forward fold. So feet about hip distance, bend the knees quite generously and drop the head. Your hands are there for support. Bend one knee, straighten the opposite leg. Let your head be fully heavy, complete release. And in inspiration of this moving water behind me, you're allowing there to be a lifting on the inhalation, almost an undulation of your ribs, and then an exhale shift to the other side in your knees. So as you bend one knee and straighten the opposite leg, inhale, transition to the other side, exhale, fold. And just take note of the sensations in the mid back, the side of the hip, the outer leg. The hands are here for balance, but there's not a lot of weight in the fingers. Do one more to each side so you feel even and equal. As you come to center, drop the arms and ragdoll slowly up to standing. As we come back up to stand tall, roll the heads of the arm bones up and back. Make fists with your hands, so fingers curl in, thumbs on top. Take a big circle, morning stretch open, full rotation of the arms forward. Up and forward, going to your fullest range. And then a couple best with some moments and really releasing, emptying out those arm underarms, the upper shoulders, dropping, whatever needs to be let go here. Then pause and reverse up and back slowly open. Big inhalation, not rushing. In fact, going a little slower and not skipping over harder spots you might be finding. Good, a couple with momentum. Great way to wake up your mind, wake up your upper body, soft through the knees, strong through the legs. 
then pause, give your hands a little shake out, open the palms wide, right over left, tap on the shoulder, left over right. And this movement pattern is really great for whether you're going to be going for a run, a walk, whether it's just your wake up of moving the blood flow in the morning, do this every day. Even just what you remember of it. Now the simple shift here is arms wide, turn the thumbs so they're forward and cross over. Knife edges slicing through. All right, pausing, thumbs down, back to the hands. Do this one slow at first so you get the movement pattern. Tap, press. Tap, press, speed it up to your degree, just where the momentum feels good. Full breath. You've been doing these, this patterns for some time, so it should start to feel a little easier, but if you've been active in a new way, you might find this more challenging. Be fluid in the breath. Release here, give the hands a little shake out. Let's take the palms open. We'll start with the right hand, take it out to the side. Looking back at that hand, rotating up, over, and under. Take that right side one more time, up, over, and under. Left side, take it out. Big breath, up, over, and under. Again, left, in, over, and through. And right side again, up, open, and under. Left side, up, open, through. Good, two together, reach out. Up, over, by the hips, roll through. And again, you can bring that fluid energy to the whole spine, up through the neck and the shoulders, soften through the knees, let your body move front to back and a little side to side. One more. Yeah, pause at the center. Reach up for that imaginary chin up bar, pull the chin up and over in a way that's not just drop, bring the head back, but you're reaching, pulling up, diving into the pool, ribs back. Inhale, lift up and over. Exhale back. Inhale, pull. Exhale through. Do three more. Follow the breath to the very, very end. On the in and on the out. One more. As you come back to center, hands together, arms straight out in front. And just for a moment, Think about your feet pulling in and your hips slightly pull back towards your heels. Keep that anchor. Pull your left hand along your right, elbow as high as the shoulder. Those that did the archer with me before, same thing applies, now open the ribs. Use the hand to open the shoulder. Eyes on your front target. And eventually as you pull the elbow back far enough, open the arm behind you. If that doesn't feel good, keep the hand on the shoulder. Slide back to center. Inhale, pull right side. Open the ribs, soft through the knees. Watch you're not sending the hips forward. Open it up. 
Bend the elbow, slide back. Pull left. Exhale, open the arm. Fluid with this movement, bend on the inhale, glide on the exhale. Inhale, pull. Exhale, open. Inhale, bend. Exhale, slide. One more each side. If you're feeling that little bit of burn in the upper arms, keep going. Building that resilience to getting past and over those challenging moments. Pull the right. Open. Bend. And slide. Relax those arms. Give them a little squeeze out if they need it. Let's step the feet now about a little wider than your hip distance. Toes slightly turned out. Make a fist with your left hand, right hand on top. Soften through both knees and then really bend your left knee. Pull your hips straight back. Pause there for an instant. So this is where we're starting to notice where we want to kind of skip over just a little bit. We're not holding, but there's just that little bit of roll across and then back up. Inhale, bend. Exhale, pull that sweeping hip back. Bend the opposite side and back to center. Good. Now you can go at any pace that feels good in that hip socket, those femurs gliding and sliding but also start to notice where you skip over. I know I have the same problems of finding those moments and, ah, this part's hard. I don't want to stay here too long. So we sort of jump over the edges. Let's not miss too much here. Let's do two more. And then pause, right hand fist, left hand on top. Bend the right knee, pull the hips straight back. Same thing on this side, we take that moment of still cross and up. Bend, pull, glide over. Nice, one more. Up to center, hands to hips. We're going to turn our left foot in and our right foot out. So we're turning to face the right edge of our mat and squaring off the hips. If your feet are too far apart, you might find it hard to square. So step in nice and close, like a stride distance. Bend your front knee, but keep your back leg fairly. So you can soften it just a little, just so it's not launching into the back of the knee. And we're doing little pelvic, so we're just going to tilt forward, like you're pouring the pelvis out. Then you're tipping the right up, tucking the tail under, lifting your left hip up, and then pouring forward. And this is where I definitely know we find our skip over spots. So tuck, tip, tuck, tip, pour. Lift the right hip, tuck the tail lift the left hip, pour it out. We're going one direction first, and then we'll go the other, and it might feel better one way than the other. And you might even find there's not a lot of movement from one to the next if you're really tight anywhere in this lower back region. And again, we tend to skip over where it gets hard. We we'll try not to skip too much. Do one more round. And then pause, bring it back to center and just take a moment to tip and tilt the hips so that you feel the length in your lower back. And we go the other way. So let's go pour forward, lift that left hip, Tuck the tail under, lift the right hip, 
and pour forward again. So you're eventually working into a bit of a round the world with your hips, but being really mechanical about it to start can sometimes feel a little out of sorts. So if it's not feeling great to go one, two, three, four, let the hip simply roll with that fluid. You might even find shortening your stance gives you a little more access. You might feel this down through the ankle and the calf of the leg behind you. And that might be what's pulling your pelvis out of that rotation. All right, one more. I find these ones really challenging. So if you do too, it's okay. Spin your feet around. We go the other direction, square the hips off. Take a moment to really think, I wanna pour the pelvis forward. So it's like an articulation forward and then dropping the right hip, tucking the tail, pulling the left hip up, then pouring forward. So it's a pour, hip, tuck, roll. So you find that fluid, that intention of moving around. Notice if and I do this on this side, I tend to move my ankles rather than my hip. So be really aware of the movement for you. I know some of you have expressed that this really does free up your lower back and it's not a big movement. I try to over exaggerate it when I show you, but it's really quite subtle in the movement in your own body. And you might feel in your hands that ability to roll your hips a little more. If you wanna slow it down and tick tock around, that is all good too. Let's do one more this direction, then reverse. So we tuck, lift the left hip, roll, pour the pelvis forward, and the hip comes up. It's these types of movements that sometimes can be really frustrating. And some of our mobility work can be more frustrating than just moving through a vinyasa, a fluid pattern. But this work really complements your ability to be more fluid in all your activities. And a couple more here. And all you're doing is repatterning your mind, body, brain to feel these intricate shifts. Good, last one. Come back to center and bring your feet right together. As you bring your feet together, take your arms out like your big tree in front of you. Way back in your heels, squeeze your knees, top to the thighs towards each other. Sit your hips back and back and back. Your arms are reaching forward as you're sitting back. We're pulling the knees just behind the toes. It's like we're going straight down. Now at some point here, you might hit your limit. You might reach for the fingertips and do a little more forward curling. If you have the flexibility in the ankles or the hips, you might even use your fingers behind you and sit your hips a bit lower. But we do our best to keep our heels flat. So whichever direction is pulling you, let it and take three breaths here. You can either reach in front or behind. Pull the chin into the chest. So it's like we're curling the whole spine from tip to tail. The hands are there for balance, we use them. Try not to rely on them and know that they're there to help and support. They might be reaching forward or pushing back. Yeah, you guys have great flexibility. So from here, we're lifting the hips back up. Fingertips in front of the toes. And we'll step back into a downward facing dog. 
And nice and long from front to back. Press through the palms, lift up through the tail. Come forward to the top of your push up. Lower your knees and come all the way down to your belly. Point the toes back behind, lift into a gentle cobra. Releasing down. Tuck the toes under, hands and knees, sit back into puppy dog. A little squeeze of the hips, shifting left and right. You might shift to one side a little more than the other. Okay, for an extra breath. Good. From here, come into your downward facing dog. Soften through the knees. Look forward and step your right foot between your hands. Lower your left knee. With our fingertips on either side, I'm just going to do a little, or a little hip flossing, I should say. We're going to pull our hips straight back. Hands can shift underneath either on a block or on the floor. Hips forward, chest up. Hips back, chest low. Inhale, exhale. And I want you to start to tap into your rhythm, your flow of breath. If your intention is to be fluid, what does that relate in your mind to be fluid? To move like water, to be like the river. Good, do two more here. And then you'll pull your hips forward, come into a full lunge. Back toes can be tucked or pointed, hands to front knee. Press your heart back. So I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do a little more work mid-body. So as you're pulling your mid-body back, because it'll actually send you more into the opening of your left hip. Now we all think the expression, that biggest arc is maybe looks but it doesn't necessarily feel the best. We want to go to that better feeling in our body. I tend to use the good, better, best mentality. So this is good, this is better, this is best. You're finding your space to open. It's like you're leaning your heart back. If you want to take the hand to help lift up and back, feel free to do that. My back hand is just on my left hip pressing it so I feel less compression in my lower back. If it feels okay here, you could even reach up and let the shoulder open back. Nice full breath here. Now we're gonna reverse by pulling our hips back. You can bring the hand down to support. Left hand comes under the shoulder to start. Front leg goes straight. Hand out to the side and right arm this time up to the sky. We're taking our side body, the space in our lower back through lots of angles. You can reach straight up, even reach over the ear. I don't know if you can see, but there's two eagles, or sorry, one eagle out in the ocean right now, chasing someone else. Nature moment. As you reach up and over the ear, big articulation through your side waist. Two more breaths. As we bend the front knee again, sweep the hands inside your front foot. It's going to be quite a bit on one side before we shift to the other. Just as a heads up, lift your back knee. Rotate your heel down, 
so you're more open into a warrior two like position in your legs and reach your arms out on an angle like downward dog on fingertips open wider than the shoulders and then let your head go and look back between your feet and towards your left heel deep breath here three Pull your hips back, but anchor into your fingers to not let them fall back. Two. Now in one, we're going to walk the hands back under the shoulders. We're still on that angle to the side, and we walk the hands out to the left, and the right heel spins around so that the feet are now parallel. We're in our wide-legged straddle. Soften your knees and sink back in your heels till your fingers get lighter. Even take your hands to your shins and push so your heart comes forward. Pause here for a moment, take a breath, and fill your lower back so you don't feel that compression. Left hand to the floor, right arm to the sky. Now you'll feel your left hip drive towards your right foot. Let it. Let there be fluid in that joint. There be softness in the knees and the ankles. Push the heels apart. Take the right hand down. Take the left arm up. Feel how the right hip drives towards your left inner foot. Bring the left hand down. Bring your hands to your shins and press your heart tall, 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 all the way up to standing. Catch the hips with your hands. Spin your right foot forward, warrior two. Like I said, lots on this one side. Now we're gonna go fluid here. Straighten the leg, look up, reach up. Sit into warrior two, exhale. Look up, reach up, breathe in. Exhale, settle. Reach up, look up. Exhale, sit in. Two more. Relax the shoulders, soften through the elbows, find the fluid nature through the whole body. Pause, take a breath. Hands to the mat. Downward dog. Now this is always or often a great place to flow, but if it's too much, just take a child's pose. Lower chaturanga if you'd rather. Little cobra, little surfer as I call it out here. Releasing, press back, puppy dog, and stay, let the head roll. Long breath in. Long breath out. Lifting into your downward dog. Step the left foot forward. Bring the right knee down. Set the feet, take the arms up and hands to your front knee. Press both hips forward towards your lunge. Notice if you just fall into your lunge, maybe that feels good. If it does, stay. If it doesn't, feel into your lower back. Right hand can come to the back of that right hip. And then press up a little more. Lean your heart back. So you're going into a place and space that's giving you more lift and less compression. There's a lot of bodies out there that have the flexibility to go into those spaces and feel free. But not all bodies are created equal. Be in your body, be in your breath. Feel that subtle undulation with your breath to lift you out of compression and into expansion, a bit more open. You're pulling up and going back. We're not compression, think spacious. Two more breath here. And 
and then we'll gradually reverse so we're bringing the left hand down front leg goes straight hands on either side oh we forgot to do a little flossing so let's just add that here of pulling hips back heart forward breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out Good. two more like this. That might give you more space in that lower back, more expression to release that outer hip, hamstring. Then let's straighten the leg, right hand just off to the side, left arm peels the rib cage open. Take your expression up and open towards the right. You know, take that little bit of curling open of the ribs or maybe close the ribs. You pull the ribs slightly back, but the shoulder a little forward. I find it taps a little deeper into that outer left rib cage. As you bend the front knee, bring the hand inside that front foot. As you come inside, you'll lift the back knee and spin your right heel down. Walk the hands out on an angle out towards that right upper corner. Let your head look back. You're looking towards your right heel or somewhere between your heels. Your breath is full. Your shoulders wide. Maybe walk the hands a little wider and be on the fingertips. And imagine your hips pulling further back, but your fingertips are anchoring you to this place, not letting you fall back. Walk the hands under the shoulders as you lift halfway. Walk the hands to the middle and turn your feet to parallel. Soften through the knees, pull the hips back, get lighter in your fingers. And if you're feeling this in your middle, lower back, hands to shins especially, lift your heart a bit higher and pull the rib cage up. And start here, a little bend in the knees, right hand comes down, left arm to the sky. You'll feel your right hip drive towards your left toes. Express up through the upper fingertips, but soft through the elbow, through the shoulder. Left hand comes down, right arm goes up. Pull the weight back in your heels. If you find yourself leaning into your fingers, go back into your legs. Your legs are much stronger, more stable. Bring the right hand back down. Hands to shins, slide all the way up to standing. Hands to hips, turn your left toes forward. Find your warrior two. Little fluid movement now, straighten the leg, look up, reach up. Exhale, melt in. Look up, reach up. Sitting in. Three more, follow your rhythm. Wait for the pause at the end of each breath. One more. Pausing here, take a full inhalation. Hands to the mat, exhale, step back, downward dog or child's pose, optional vinyasa, high plank, lower, little surfer, little cobra, lift the chest, release, and press back puppy dog.
a little hip shift from side to side. Now you'll come up and bring your knees into the center of your mat. And you can do this on the long or short edge of your mat as long as you have space to the left and to the right of you. So we will be extending out left and right for this next one. So choose a direction that serves your space. Left hand comes out and down. Right arm reaches over, right heel kicks away. Now push through your right heel until your pinky toe goes flat. And now curl your torso down and then roll it open to the sun, to the sky, to the ceiling. And then roll it in and roll it open. Roll it in and open. This is the subtle articulations through the vertebra into the shoulder. There's some stability required. But trying to soften through the left elbow, even the right elbow, to not lock your shoulders in any particular position. One more. And as you come through, you'll bring the knees together and take your right arm out to the side. Kick the left foot out, right arm over your ear, setting in a position that feels stable. You're sending your hips forward. Your whole body can roll open and roll down. Roll open and through. Three more. Now we're getting into some of the stuck fascia. It doesn't always feel good, but we don't want any pain. So if there's any sharpness, don't go that far. Your last one, bring the knees together. Good. If you need a cushion for your hips, feel free to do so here. Now we're going to stretch the feet. So with the toes pointed, squeeze your ankles together. They're going to want to separate. Squeeze them in. Maybe take your thumbs, the center of your calves, to help you sit down with more ease. We'll take the right arm up and the right hand to the back of the head or down to the back of the neck. You'll take your left hand to your tail to start. Pull your elbows back. Now, when you pull your elbows back, it might arc the spine. So let's pull back in. Stay tall at center and start to wiggle or walk your fingers towards each other. Now they don't have to meet, but it's maybe something in your mind's eye that you're headed towards. Now, if they do meet, you might hook your fingers to each other. If that's really far and you want to have a connection, use a strap, a belt, a shirt, anything between the hands. As we sit back here, we might lift and adjust, squeeze those ankles back together and sit back onto our heels. Stay tall on the inhalation. Pull your front ribs to your back ribs on your exhalation. Two more breaths. As you release your second breath, release your arms. Give them a little octopus wiggle out left and right side to side come off your feet give them a little tap out ankles straight still this time tuck the toes under and as you tuck the toes under take your left arm up to the sky back of the hand and go slow so you're feeling the mechanics of that arm where we tend to skip over once we've reached the base of the neck you might even hook your hand under your ridge of your skull to keep the chin level. We don't want to pull it down. We want to have that consistency, right hand to tail. Take a breath here first. Might be plenty, especially if our shoulders are tight or 
bothersome right now. And if there's space, you'll start to walk your fingers towards each other. And I know for me on this side, reaching fingertips is just not there. And we find our space, we find our mobility, our flexibility in every breath. Like feet might start talking to you. Take two more breaths. Gradually releasing your arms. Give the shoulders a little shrug, hands forward. Give the feet a little tap out, a little rinse. And we'll come back around to the long edge of the mat, straighten out into our downward facing dog. And we'll come into a half pigeon, right knee to right wrist, right foot to the left edge. Where we sit tall, pull the right hip back. Now, similar to how we were in our lunge so from the side. When the one foot is forward and one foot is back, our pelvis wants to open and we tend to want to pull it back into alignment square for certain movements. Now we can stay right here and this might be where you want to be. Do this, come into your forearms. We'll do a little shoulder flossing on our forearms. You can also do this on your palms if this is too deep. But all we're doing to floss the shoulders is letting the arms pull back and the chest come down. Almost like you're pinning your shoulder blades together. And then push into your pinky fingers and your forearms, your elbows, and try to puff up your middle back. And then pulling the heart forward and back. And we're effectively just moving the arm bone in and out of that shoulder socket. And the strongest place for it to live is right in the middle. That's where we get the most su support and stability over time, but we wanna have mobility to move it around. All right, do that two, three more times. And you have the option then to come to your forehead, reach out in front, or left hand down, right hand front of right knee, and a little twist to the right. And that will accentuate your right hip opening. So again, if it's too much, you can add that fluid movement of unfurling the ribs and rotating them open. A little unfurling. So I want to give you the freedom to move a little bit today through some of these tighter spaces. And if it feels best to just stay forward, just stay forward. All right, last couple here. As we sit back up to center, forearms or hands, Pull your rib cage back like you're trying to do a cat spine, a rounded back. Chin even comes into the chest. And then pull your heart forward and think of tucking your tail under to sit a bit taller. Maybe walk the hands back and the chest up. This can be a deep back bend. When you're thinking of that long line from that lunge, getting even longer. And then hands plant ahead, lean in, pull the ribs back, chin to chest. That subtle undulation, release the heart forward, sit a little taller. One more like that, hands flat, pull the ribs back. Pull the heart forward. it up tall. Now as we plant the palms this time, we'll tuck the back toes and slide back to a downward dog. Taking the other side now, the left knee to the left wrist. 
the right foot straight back. Toes point or tuck. Start tall. Full breath. Fluidly moving forward to your elbows, your pinky fingers, and just five more little flossing. Because when we shift the hip position, we're effectively shifting the shoulder position. You know, the ribs might come up towards and the shoulder might jet in. So starting to move front to back. So floor to ceiling, you could think of front to back with the rib cage or earth to sky. That last one, you can stay here, even go a little deeper. If you want to stay forward, do so. Left hand in front of the knee if you'd like to rotate. Subtle rotation towards your left. And then unwinding to center if you need to unfurl. Sometimes just that little bit of movement. We've done a lot of movement in the low middle back. We want to allow it to maintain that movement. Letting the fascia slide and glide, starting our day, awakening from center. And your last one, come back around through center. You can be up on the palms, pull the chin into the chest, a little rounded cat spine. Pull the heart forward, think shoulders back. And as you floss the shoulders, we start to learn where our arms can be in space. Round it out. Pulling through. Round it out. Pulling through. Good, last one. As you come to sit tall, we'll tuck the back toes under and slide back to downward dog. Give your feet a little pedal, moving the, sh the hips shifting from left to right. And then from here, you'll make your way onto your back. As you lie back, bend your knees and pull them into your chest. We'll take a single bridge here because we've done lots of flexion and extension. We want to use the legs to ensure we have stability in our low back, our middle back. So before you lift, take your hands onto your low belly to your hips. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Feel your spine growing longer from tail to head. Pull your heels towards you. You might walk them in, but just physically pull and you'll feel the backs of your hamstrings wake up. Then a little push down to lift the hips towards the sky. The hands can stay there or they can slide around underneath and interlace. Maybe rock one shoulder under and then the other. Squeezing, lifting, opening. Pull the heels in. Notice how we tend to go to pushing. Try to focus on pulling as your activator. Release the hands, release the tail. When you reach the base, take a breath. Front ribs to back. 
walk your feet away from you about halfway and out to the edges of your mat. Take your wings wide to the sides and sweep your knees gently side to side. We've done a lot of work for our lower back, the hip to femur or femur to hip socket connection. Start to release here the head and the neck, the jaw. While the knees are moving, let the rest of the body be stationary and still. And you feel like you've unwound the lower back and it feels a little freer, pause at center and maybe just let the knees fall into each other. A little kiss of knee to knee. That opens the sacrum, the lower back. Otherwise, you can bring your feet together and your knees wide for more inner leg opening. That can feel compressive in our lower back. So choose one or the other and take three full breath cycles. You can stretch the legs long if that feels best from this stage. And let the arms fall open. Take a four part inhalation. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Hold. Steady exhale. Inhale, inhale. Inhale, inhale, relax the shoulders, the jaw, the face, exhale. Shifting your mind to the awareness of fluid within you. How the body moves in a fluid fashion. And though at times we can feel as though we're moving against the current, we're still fluid. Though at times we may feel rigid, remembering that, I, that water takes many forms, like ice, vapor, liquid. We too can be firm, soft, at ease as we release more deeply. Scan your body, let it all fall away. As you gradually recognize where your body is here on the mat, steady, still. Notice the quality of your thoughts, your breath, the awareness through your fingertips, through your toe tips. Stay here a little longer. Take your time as you feel ready to rise, moving wrists ankles, bending knees and rolling onto one side. And 
as you rise back to your seat, remembering the only constant is change and how we move within it, around it, between it is fluid. Just as the drop of rain that lands on top of the mountain finds its way to the great ocean, we are all simply drops of a greater ocean. Bring your hands to your heart. Bow inward to your dedication, your commitment to the water within us, around us, and between us. Namaste. Thank you for joining me here in Tofino land.